Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to the Kruskal Wallace H test. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. The Kruskal Wallace H test is a non parametric test. And this test is sometimes referred to as the one way ANOVA on ranks. It is a non-parametric alternative to the one-way ANOVA. So with a one-way ANOVA, you have one independent variable with two or more levels and one dependent variable measured at the continuous level of measurement. So with a research design and data that were going to be analyzed by a one-way ANOVA, if those data fail to meet the assumptions for one-way ANOVA, the kruskal wallace H test is a possibility. The kruskal wallace H test has one null hypothesis, and that is that the distributions are equal. However, we can think of this in two ways, depending on whether or not the data used in the kruskal wallace H test meet a specific assumption, which I'll talk about in a moment. It's the assumption that the distribution shapes are similar. If the data do not meet that assumption, the null hypothesis would be that the mean ranks of the levels are equal. If the shapes of the distributions are similar, the null hypothesis is that the medians of the levels are equal. Now let's take a look at the elements of the Kruskal Wallace H test. Not surprisingly, the elements of a Kruskal Wallace H test are going to look fairly similar to the elements of a one way ANOVA. You have one independent variable with two or more levels, and this independent variable is categorical. Now, if we have one independent variable with just two levels, we would use a Mann-Whitney U-test, and the result of that test is going to be the same as the result of a kruskal wallace H test, when you just have two levels of the one independent variable. For the kruskal wallace H test, you have one dependent variable, again, just like one-way ANOVA. However, the difference is that the dependent variable in a kruskal wallace H test allows the data to be measured as low as the ordinal level of measurement. So it has interval and ratio levels of measurement. It also includes the ordinal level of measurement. So taking a look at these levels of measurement, I'm going to work from ratio to interval and then to ordinal. So again, with the kruskal wallace H test, all three of these levels of measurement are acceptable with the one-way ANOVA, only interval or ratio. So with the ratio level of measurement, the distance between the observations is meaningful. For example, the Kelvin scale measuring temperature. The distance between the points on the scale has meaning. Also with a ratio level variable, there is a true zero. So if you consider the Kelvin scale, a zero on the Kelvin scale represents an absence of heat an absence of the construct that the scale measures. That's a ratio level of measurement. Moving down to interval, to the interval level of measurement, you have the distance between the points that's meaningful. You retain that component, but you no longer have a true zero. So consider the Fahrenheit scale. This, that scale for measuring temperature has a zero, but that zero doesn't represent an absence of the construct that that scale measures. It doesn't represent an absence of heat, so it's not a true zero. That's an interval level of measurement. As you move down to the ordinal level of measurement, you have a variable made up of ranks. So you could think of one example could be like a race. You have a first place finisher, second place finisher, and a third place finisher, first, second, and third in a race but you don't know the distance between the first and second place finishers or the second and third place finishers. 
so the distance between those ranks doesn't have meaning. You don't know what the distance is. Ranked values such as those are ordinal, and the Kruskal-Wallace age test can have a dependent variable that's measured at the ordinal level of measurement, which makes it a little more flexible than one-way ANOVA. Now let's take a look at the assumptions for a Kruskal-Wallace age test. So you have the independent variable at two or more levels. You have the dependent variable measured the ordinal interval or ratio level of measurement. And then, strictly speaking, you only have one more assumption, and that's the independence of observations. So if we have an independent variable named treatment, and that variable contains, say, three levels, rational mode of behavioral therapy, psychodynamic therapy, and a waiting list. That's three groups, three levels of that independent variable. Each participant can only belong to one of those levels. You need to have independence of observations. If you only meet the independence of observations assumption as well as the variable construction, the one independent variable and the dependent variable, then as I mentioned before, you are looking at the difference between mean ranks. If you can meet the additional assumption regarding the distribution shape, you can look at the difference in medians. And this additional assumption is the distributions of the dependent variable for all levels of the independent variable must have similar shapes. And we would use histograms and box plots to determine if the distributions have similar shapes. So meeting this additional assumption allows you to interpret the results of the Kruskal-Wallace H test in terms of medians and not just mean ranks. You notice here as well under the assumptions for the Kruskal-Wallace H test that there is no assumption of normality. And again the Kruskal-Wallace H test is a non-parametric alternative to a one-way ANOVA and a one-way ANOVA does assume that you have normality on the dependent variable for each level of the independent variable. So if you are looking to conduct a one-way ANOVA and your data fail to meet the assumption of normality, the Kruskal-Wallace H test could be a good alternative. I hope you found this introduction of the Kruskal-Wallace H test to be useful. Thanks for watching.